Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. In this video today, I want to show you guys how to set up a laser setup on a box blade. I know there's a lot of different types of box blades out there. The one that I currently have right here is an ATI box blade with a uh, cat skid steer. I'm going to show you how to properly set up the laser poles, and these LR410s is what these are called, that have the laser strikers on them, which is this red part right here that is just like on your normal grade rod pole. I'm going to show you how to establish the right elevation and to get it set up above the cab. If you don't have an elevating tripod like this, it's not the end of the world. You can use your normal legs. Uh, you're just not going to be able to get it as high as you need to. The reason for that is that laser beam is known for bouncing off of windows. It can bounce off the window on the cab here. It can bounce off vehicle windows or building windows in the distance. So one reason mainly, at least for the machine right here, is to get these LR410s up above the cab elevation for two reasons. One, for the strike of the beam not bouncing, and two, if you want to be able to turn the machine around and work away from the laser, you want them obviously above the cab elevation. And that's why these poles are so tall. So the main thing to do is establish the height of your laser to, you, to where you know that beam is above the cab elevation, then you can take your pole, bench to your elevation, and set those where they need to be. So what we'll do, if I've got an elevation established right here, what I'm going to do is set down with my laser and make sure. So right there is the elevation that I want to match. You could use that anywhere that you've got an actual elevation that obviously needs to be matched. Now what you're going to do is you're going to set this up. You're going to set your striker up there and you're going to get these to match. So right now I've got the cutting edge right above, the, just barely above the ground. So I know that I'm pretty close. So all I need to do is with the striker on the red side right here, get this pulled up to about that elevation. So with your LR410s, just come up and establish where the grade is. So right about there is where I need to be on the center of the red. So I'm just going to run my LR410 up until it matches about that. And now all you need to do is get it close just so that the striker beam is right about the middle of this, this receiver right here. And you only really need to do that on one side. Once you've established one side, now what you can do is just take a tape measure on the one side and make the other side match that. So on the very side of the striker or the receiver right here is kind of a knob right in the middle. So I just take a tape measure. So I put my tape measure underneath that and I just go up until I get about there. So it's actually right about eight feet, right on the dot for eight feet. All I need to do is match this other side to that same. Any error that may be in the striker can actually be taken out as we do the bench. I'm gonna come up, get it close. Give my tape measure under there and come up until I'm about eight feet. So I'm just a hair high for that. So we'll just drop it down just a hair. Yep, right there. So now that I've established both sides there with the eight feet, I know that it actually is going to be to where the beam is about the middle of the strikers right now. Then we can go in and actually do an official bench inside. Now, if there is any little bit of error from side to side, let's say you make a couple passes and they miss by just a little bit, I'll show you where you can vertically offset each one to, to, to take that error out. So if you do end up using an actual caterpillar with your attachment here, there are some settings that have to be set up here on the panels here, just to make sure you can get everything working out there and that the screen itself will work. One, for example, is the number eight right here needs to be down, which means it's actually giving power to the attachment and the screen. If you were to turn this off, it would actually kill power to the EC out there. 
and it wouldn't work. The other thing is, is on Rabbit, if you need to move across the job site pretty fast, you can have this on Rabbit, but it won't turn it into autos. So turn this down off of Rabbit when you're working. The other thing is, is to get the actual attachment to work out right there. And once you turn your part brake off, there's a button on the right side here for the high flow. We've got to get the high flow established right here. When you click that, you can see that the icon is flashing right there. All you need to do is hit the roller right here, push and hold up on it until that goes solid. Then it'll go solid, you can let off and you'll hear the high flow. So now on your left side to manually go up and down, it's up with the top button, down with the bottom button, and then to pitch it side to side, you have to hold the finger button on the back and hit those. So if you click that and hit it, you can see we can pitch it, pitch it side to side manually. Now, the other thing is, is the Earthworks screen here, the TD510, is actually Wi-Fi to the EC520 out there. It's not hardwired in. Even though it has a wire in here, it's just power. It's got to do the Wi-Fi, and it needs to be set up, and you can see the icon on the screen right here has to be solid. So if you just jump in here and hit Earthworks or Cat Grade, it's not going to work until that's on. Once you're good there, go ahead and log in. It's going to come to your main dashboard. Now you can set this up into multiple different configurations. We have the laser pulls on, so we can't really run 3D unless we had a different type of bracket. But in your machine setup here in your dashboard, you can change this one in between dual GNNS, GNNS, left and right, or UTS. But we're going to stay on 2D for what we're doing here. There's a little black box right here. If you click this, you can change the sensor combinations. So the icons right now, we are on laser laser. You can run laser left and cross slope, or cross slope left and laser on the right side. You can also do a combination of just cross slope and the operator manually doing it. There's multiple different things in here. If you had a sonic tracer hooked up, it would actually be an option in there. But we're gonna go laser, laser for both sides. We're gonna hit apply. Now the sense system status is set up, and in job setup, let's say you had a brand new job site. I've already got one in here, but if you need to start a new job site, you don't need a calibration file or anything for the 3D world. You just need to create a new one. So we'll go ahead and add a new one in here. We'll hit a create, and we'll just call this the, uh, we'll call it the site tech grading. Once we go ahead and do that and hit save, we've got a brand new job site set up and we can start that one up. Hit select. We can apply and start the program. So once everything's good on dashboard, there's no issues with licenses, system status, you'll have the yellow bar. We hit start. So as soon as we come in here, you can see that the lasers already are catching a beam because we got it right as close as we could be, but we need to still bench it. So where I've got the blades sitting right above the ground from where we, we actually set it, you're going to notice on the right side of your screen here an icon that looks like a, a laser to the left and a laser to the right there. If you hit the left one, it's going to bench the left laser. And if you hit the right one, it's going to bench out the right laser. Those are just by tapping those icons. If you push and hold on like the left one right here, there's a couple different options in here. One is this bench to receiver center. If you click that on, it'll actually make it to where it'll bench it out at the center of the striker. And I prefer that people have that on because if you bench at the top of the striker or at the bottom of it, you only have a little bit of range before you get outside of that and you'll constantly be saying, lost laser strike, lost laser strike. So I like to leave those in the middle and hit bench. Same thing with the right one. Make sure the bench to center is on and hit bench. So we're good to go there. Now what we can do is turn the autos on. So we've got it on manual right there. We've got our button set right, our high flows on. The auto is this button on the back side right here. If you click that, the autos turn on and it obviously comes up to grade. So the only way you really know if you're actually matching out there is to take the laser pull that you've got and now go set it on the cutting edge, which you can do. You can set it on the cutting edge now that we've zeroed out and see if it matches on both sides or you can make a couple passes and then just check it with the laser pull to make sure it matches. A couple different ways right there. Let's say that you are missing on one side. The left side's a hair high or low, right side hair high or low. You make a pass, move over, make another pass, and you get what I call a staircase. You can change that vertically here on the top right here to make it match. 
So after you do that, let's say the left one's off a little bit, you can touch and hold on the laser le uh, left laser option and you can vertically offset. You can also put memories in uh, just like you can in the Earthworks in the 3D world. But you can go ahead and put that in there. Let's say we want to put a point 0.05 in there, minus, make go a little bit below grade. We'll hit apply. Same thing on the right side right there. We want to match that just to make a couple passes. We'll put in a 0.05 minus there. We'll hit apply. These are just the ways that you can vertically offset. Now, in the GPS world, you'd normally just have one vertical offset. That's kind of the difference here. In 3D, this would be a horizontal offset for a line, and that would be a vertical offset. Here, you can individually change each side to match as you need. And you can configure this bottom ribbon right here to show what you want. I've got cross slope and blade slope in there. On the top left right here where you've got the two laser strikers, you can touch and hold on that just on the fly and go and actually change in between the different ones you want. So right now I'll show you if you go laser left and cross slope, your icons on the screen are going to look a little different. Things changed a little bit. We still have the vertical offset for the left laser, but now since I'm not striking on the right, it's asking for a cross slope and a couple different icons on the right side right here. If I touch and hold on the level option right there, I could put in, let's say, maybe a 2%. But what it's asking for over here is the plus or minus changes it up or down which way you want. So we'll go left up to 2% and hit apply. Now you can see my cut feels a little bit different. So if I click my auto on, you'll see the blade pitch. So that blade pitched up to the left and it zeroed out. If I change this by tapping that back to zero and hit auto, it'll level the blade out. But I'm just using the laser striker on the one side. If I wanted to simply put that back to striker and striker, laser and laser, we just hit that and hit apply. Really, you can put it to whatever combination you want in here. You can also put on a sonic tracer if you needed to and work it with the strikers with the lasers. What you can do now is make some passes and make sure that it all matches and then you can go out and check it with your laser pole. There again, make sure that it matches side by side right there. But hopefully this video from Sight Thickener Mountain on using Earthworks with a rotating laser, using a laser and the LR410s helps. If you have a rotating laser that's a sloping laser, you can do that also. Once you've established the grade for the two poles and you've got everything pretty well dialed in in the blade, you could go out to your laser and actually change that to maybe a 1% or 2% main fall, give it maybe a 1% or 2% side slope. And as soon as you come back into the machine, your strikers up here are really just following the laser beam. So yes, you don't, you don't have to be level all the time. You can do a sloping laser with this option also. But once again, thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Inter Mountain on using lasers with whatever attachment you've got. We've got an ATI box blade here.